Hey guys, what's up? Tyler here with T Game and Tech, and today I'm bringing you guys an overview of Cyanogen Mod 10 and running Jelly Bean on my Galaxy S3. And so we're just going to start it up here. And I decided to put Cyanogen Mod 10 on my Galaxy S3 because I've seen a lot of other people do it. And I just want to try it out. And I like the pure Jelly Bean experience on my Nexus 7. And so I definitely wanted to get it and try it out on the G Galaxy S3. And so this is the new Cyanogen Mod logo and boot up logo. Um, it used to be something different before. It had a 9 in the bottom. But this is their new one that they have included with this nightly build that I have installed. And this is the nightly build from the end of August. I'm not sure exactly what date it is. But so this isn't probably the newest one they have. There probably is a newer version. But this is the nightly build that I have installed. And so as it boots up, it didn't take that long. And as you can see, this is the lock screen. And it looks a lot like the Nexus 7 lock screen because it's running stock Jelly Bean. And so right here, we can unlock it. Um, we can go to the camera, Google Now, and unlock. And I also installed some lock screen shortcuts. And you can do that in the settings. I'll show you guys how to do that later. So we're just going to unlock it for now. And right here is my home screen. And as you can see, very snappy, no lag at all. And one thing I noticed in Ice Cream Sandwich is that whenever there were widgets that were being installed, they'd, they'd lag a little bit whenever you go into that screen. But I haven't really noticed any lag whatsoever when I'm using this. And so that's one nice thing. It does run a lot smoother than Ice Cream Sandwich. Um, Ice Cream Sandwich wasn't bad. It just lagged just a little bit whenever you're going to pages with widgets. Um, but these, these screens don't seem to lag at all in my opinion. And if you know what Jelly Bean is and how it runs, you know a lot of these features. And most of, if not all, Jelly Bean features are available in this ROM. And so you can adjust your different widgets um, and just move them around. And it reorganizes your apps automatically. So you can just move this and it will tell those apps to move up there. And um, if you want to move this one around, it would move the apps around automatically. And so um, in Ice Cream Sandwich on the Galaxy S3, you couldn't do that. It would say, there's no room to do this. You have to remove apps. And so it's nice in Jelly Bean, things would just automatically move around and adjust to however you want to make them. As far as buttons on the Galaxy S3, um, it's not like the Galaxy Nexus where you have all your home screen buttons, your capacitive buttons. Um, here we have buttons we have a home button, that's a physical button, then we have two capacitive buttons. And they all work perfectly fine with this ROM. Um, there's no issues there. Uh, the back button works just fine as you just saw. And the menu button or the settings button works fine as well. And the home button, if we just go into the app drawer, works just fine as well. One thing though that I have noticed is that sometimes whenever the phone is either locked, um, sometimes it does want to turn back on whenever I press the home button. But most of the time it works, sometimes it doesn't. I have to use this lock button but it's not really a big deal to me because I usually use this anyways. Um, I've been training myself to use this more. But um, it might be something that's fixed in a later build. But it's just, like I said, sometimes it doesn't work for me. But it's not that big of a deal because if you just want to unlock it or turn the screen on, you just press the side button and unlock it. So overall, everything works very well. Um, everything in Jelly Bean works well. And Google Now, we'll just go to Google Now real quick. Did the Pirates win last night? Let's see if the Pirates won. And yep, the Pirates won. So Google Now works perfectly fine. No issues there. And here's a quick look at the notification drawer. Just like the Nexus 7 in the Galaxy Nexus, you can expand your notifications if you want to, but none of these are expandable. But you just slide them out to get rid of them. And you can just have a couple toggles up here. Um, your different sounds, volume, mute, and vibrate. You can turn your Bluetooth on and off, your location, and your Wi-Fi. And so we'll just swipe up to get rid of that. And something that's also nice in CyanogenMon 10 is if you click on here, you can adjust your screen brightness just by sliding up and down on the notification bar. And so we're just going to go into the settings and show you guys some of the different settings. You have your regular Android settings. And then here on our interface, we can go to our launcher, change how our launcher works, our home screen and our drawer. And you can go to the lock screen. And this is where you can choose your lock screen shortcuts. You can put different shortcuts in. You can change your background, just different stuff like that. You can go in and adjust themes. I just have the regular standard theme, the Nexus theme. I haven't installed any other ones, so that's just the one that I use. And then in system, you can change all kinds of stuff for your status bar, your notification drawer, wallpaper, font size, and some other stuff. And so if you scroll down, you just have other general settings. And you can also set profiles for default, home, night, silent work. And you can add your own default profile if you would like to or change ones around. And if we go down to about phone, we can see that this is running Cyanogen Mod on um, the nightly build, and it is running Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean. If this would work, everybody always does this. There it goes. 
you just type, fling your jelly beans around. And this is Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean. So overall, this is a very solid ROM. If you're wondering if this is daily driver material, I would definitely have no problem saying yes. Besides the home button, not wanting to unlock the phone or turn the screen on sometimes, haven't had any other issues, nothing crashed, no issues with apps not working. Everything that I've used so far has worked fine with it. And so I would no, have no problem suggesting that you install this on your Galaxy S3. Now I have the AT&T version, and so I installed the AT&T ROM. If you have different other cellular providers, make sure you get the ROMs for them. And make sure you follow a very up-to-date guide if you're going to be installing a ROM on your phone or other device. So this has been my overview of CyanogenMod 10 for the Galaxy S3. If you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the t at the top for more tech and game related videos. And thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.